What's up guys, it's Jesse from The Power of Adventure. Today we're gonna to be installing a brand new product. It's a 12 volt exhaust fan that can be installed underneath a solar panel. So if your goal is off-grid camping and trying to fit as much solar on your roof as possible, this might be a great product for you. Let's get into it. So the question is, why do we choose this Le Mans fan over other fans like the Max Air fan? And uh, the number one reason is that you can fit more solar on your roof. This is a non-operable fan, so a Max Air fan on the roof will open and close, where this fan uh, has all of its opening and closing functions on the inside. So this louver will open when you need it, and then it'll simply exhaust underneath the solar panel. Um, but that's not the only reason we chose this. Uh, we've also had problems with uh, multiple Max Air fans in the past. They are a bit voltage sensitive, and when installed with a lithium battery, the higher voltage of a lithium battery can damage the circuit board of a Max Air fan. Uh, you get the green light of death and it just simply won't work and you have to replace the circuit board. And we've had ours uh, get fried and other customers get fried. So we were basically just uh, willing to try another product that is more compatible with lithium batteries and can fit more solar on the roof. Sounds like a win-win to me. So let's get into the install. All right, guys, we'll do a quick unboxing. There are four main parts. We have the fan, the mounting bracket, the louver, and the controller. Here is the provided bug protection. It does keep bugs out and allows plenty of airflow to come in and out of the fan. The fan does come with all the necessary hardware to install. It also comes with a optional wall controller or ceiling controller. We chose the wall controller, um, which of course will control the louver, the direction of the fan and the fan speed. We found this location at the front of the van to be extremely convenient and practical for us as it's flat and no adapters would be needed to install it. When cutting any hole in a van, we recommend to try to collect as many metal shavings as possible as they can cause rust in the future. Here I'm using a drill and a step bit to create a large enough hole just to get my jigsaw blade in so I can cut the hole that we traced earlier. Once the cut is complete, we're going to use a metal file to clean up the raw edges of the opening. And of course, we're going to use our vacuum to clean up all those little metal shavings. We will use some rubbing alcohol to clean the surface and then some black primer to paint the raw edges to prevent rust. Once that paint is dry, we're ready to mount the flange. I'm going to make a quick trace on the outside to know where I'm going to stop gluing and put a nice healthy bead of glue on the van roof and also the flange of the fan. Then I'll use eight self-tapping hex head screws to fasten it directly to the sheet metal roof of the van. From here, we're gonna use a product called Dicor, which is a self-leveling sealant used to cover up the entire edge of the flange and all the screw heads. And this is gonna prevent any water intrusion into the van. Now we're ready to mount the fan on the flange. Take note that there is a hole for the wire for, to pass through and it must be facing the rear of the fan. If you chose the wall mounted controller, you will need to run a wire from this fan to the controller. We'll touch more on this later. Gently lower it down and you will be able to feel the fan seat onto the flange and it shouldn't rotate in any way. Next, we'll take the provided hardware and fasten the fan to the flange. I like to use a hand screwdriver as to not over tighten any of the connections. And here's what it looks like on the exterior of the van. Super low profile and of course, plenty of clearance for a solar panel. Looks great. Let's move on to the interior part of the installation. As mentioned before, we chose the wall controller and this is going to control your louver, fan speed and direction of fan. This controller is prepped with three pigtails, one for a positive and negative power source, another that will go directly to the fan and another wire that will go to the louver. I'll show you that here in a minute. But to reiterate, you will have a positive and negative coming in from your source and two positives and two negatives going to the fan. This is what's required. 
Here is the louver itself and on the back side is where you will terminate your wires. And here's a quick view of the louver opened and how we trimmed it out and affixed it to our roof. Let's quick talk about the operation of the controller. This button is meant for the louver. It will open and close the interior louver to allow air to pass through. The middle switch will be used to control the intake or exhaust function of the fan, and then the dial will control the fan speed. At its max speed, it'll draw about 80 watts, which is the same as a max air fan. So my wife and I just returned from a four week road trip to Nova Scotia and we got to use this fan every single day. Whether it was when we were cooking and pulling that hot air out of the van or through the evening and we got to pull the nice cool air into the van, uh, we think it really worked well and I think it's a viable replacement for a max air fan. I am a licensed and insured off-grid electrical installer. If you think any of our services could be of use to you, you can find us at powerofadventure.us. You can find us on Instagram at Power of Adventure or on Facebook at Graver Electric LLC. As always, thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time.